A sacred fount of civilization, the river Ganges waters the Indian soul like no other. She emerges from the icy Himalayan cave of Gomuk, or cow's mouth, to tumble down the hills and pour herself into the Bay of Bengal on India's eastern shore. Along her fertile route is the nerve center of ancient Indian heritage, Varanasi, Okashi, the luminous. This is the world's oldest city, on the western bank of the Ganges, drawing pilgrims from every corner of India to symbolically refresh their connection with their culture. The culture of the Ganges northern plains resonates equally on the far southern shore of the Coromandel coast at Mahabalipuram. Man-made caves, bas-reliefs and temples dating from the 5th century to the 9th century can also be found at this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Meanwhile in the north, the spread of Buddhism from the 5th century BC gave rise to a remarkable flowering of material culture in the form of architectural and iconographic features. Especially magical are the rock-cut caves at Ajanta, deep in peninsular India, dating from the 2nd century BC to 650 AD. Earlier examples of rock paintings dating to the Stone Age around 5000 BC can be found at Bhimbetka in the state of Madhya Pradesh, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. The 25 temples at Khajuraho provide an example of sculpture in such high relief that it is almost three-dimensional in effect. The friezes are particularly famed for their delicate sensuality and forthright eroticism. Down the eastern seaboard from the Ganges Delta, a tall, proud temple has watched over these shores since the 12th century. It is Konarak, a temple dedicated to the sun, which medieval sailors from across the seven seas called the Black Pagoda for its exquisite silhouette across the waters. Close by, the resort town of Puri houses the 13th century Jagannath temple, dedicated to the deity, where divinity is personalized as the reincarnate Lord Krishna. The newly born religion of Islam began to sweep across India from the 11th century till the early 16th century, the early Muslim period. The ruins of the city of Dwar Samudra 
which was razed to the ground in 1311 by Islamic invaders, are now known as Halibid or Old City. The glorious city of Vijayanagar was also practically destroyed in the early 15th century by Muslim invaders and can now be seen as the ruins at Hampi. During this period, the Islamic rulers left behind their legacy in the form of the Qutb Minar, the Jamali Kamali tomb, and the Old Fort. All situated in Delhi and examples of the synthesis of Persian architecture with local influences. The end of the first quarter of the 16th century saw the rise of Mughal power in India. The third Mughal emperor, Akbar, took a Rajput Hindu wife declared himself the impartial ruler of Hindus and Muslims and began the process of nation building with his capital at Agra. Outside Agra, he also built the immaculately preserved city of Fatehpur Sikri, which had a specially designed forecourt for royal entertainment. Immortalized by poets over the centuries with their ballads to the eternal romance between the Emperor Shah Jahan and his Empress is the Taj Mahal. Perhaps the most enduring legacy of Mughal architecture and also one of the seven wonders of the world. The Red Fort and the Jama Masjid at New Delhi are other enduring and distinctive symbols of the Mughal legacy. Despite their initial policy of annexation, the Mughals entered into an alliance with almost all the Rajput clans, impacting on the culture and architecture of Rajasthan. The imposing Amir fort at Jaipur reveals elements of the synthesis. The Mehrangar fort at Jodhpur also known as the Citadel of the Sun, is another great example of the Rajput Mughal alliance. The remote and mighty hilltop fort of Kumbalgarh, 84 kilometers north of the city of Udaipur, is perhaps the most formidable 15th century fort in Rajasthan. The crenellated walls and buildings of the colossal and ancient fort at Chittorgarh go back well before the Mughal era and even though it was conquered by them, its spirit of defiance survived.
During this period, Rajasthan also saw a renaissance in temple architecture in the form of the Jain temples at Ranakpur and Dilwara. Dedicated to Jain Tirthankaras or Gurus, these temples are carved out of marble and showcase their exemplary artisanship. The eclipse of Mughal power was almost complete by 1761, which heralded the rise of colonial power in India in the form of British rule till 1947. The British capital was first at Calcutta, a city built by an Englishman, Job Charnock. In 1911, the capital moved to Delhi. The English architect, Sir Edwin Lutyens, built a new capital in the Indo-Saracenic style in the 1920s. Great buildings and monuments like the Secretariat, Presidential Palace, Parliament and the War Memorial, India Gate contributed to the combined heritage of India. Cities like Bombay, now Mumbai, were characterized by a Gothic influence in their important landmarks like the Victoria Terminus and the Fort area. The former summer capital of India, Simla, emerged as a hill station followed by Nainital, Darjeeling, and many more as quaint architectural outposts of the Raj. On the periphery of the Indian subcontinent, other colonial outposts like Portuguese Goa, French Pondicherry, and the Dutch Cochin also left their mark on the collective heritage of India. One country. Many cultures. India's heritage is a living record of time and space in terms of human civilization. All the ages of mankind, all the cultures of the world have added their color to the unique texture that makes India a place like no other. Romance, splendor, glory, devotion, valor and sensuality are the many pillars of this great heritage that endures even today. Come to India and see the ages come alive.